The next thing that I'd like to discuss here very briefly is the procedure that we go through with the point holding. Now the point holding we're not going to get into detail on because that'll take quite a bit of time. Um, to understand point holding thoroughly, it takes many days of study and um, reason and uh, application of the principles to know how to do it and the prioritize and systemized manner, uh, manner in which this is done so that you can give greatest benefit to the person. And this is what we find uh, after the iris sclera integrated diagnosis, we have what we call the body electronics flow sheet. And that flow sheet will tell you exactly what points we have to hold and the manner in which we hold them, so to speak, the importance of each one to bring about a opening up of a series of little tumblers in what we call a combination lock where when those tumblers open up and the body goes through a definite healing crisis. Now, one thing we need to understand is that by holding the body perfectly still, we then are able, as the points are being held and the calcifications are dissolving, we're then able to access what we call the emotional body. And we begin to feel the unconsciousness, the apathy, the grief, the fear, the anger, the pain, and then the emotion of enthusiasm. And then all of the suppressed enthusiasm, pain, anger, etc., are all released and are no longer acting in that particular area we have re-experienced in the unconscious mind. Now, there's one interesting facet that we go through, that as we're going through healing, uh, and this is becoming more and more profound every single time that we hold points, is that people go through a lot of burning, searing pain in their body, uh, which is described in ancient texts, the, the Vedic tests, uh, texts and so on, that goes way back many thousands of years. They call it the fire of the Kundalini. We have discovered that in our time. Now the fire of the kundalini, when it is re-experienced, is like red hot molten lava running through the body. And that is bringing about a tremendous transmutation of the emotional body in that slice of the pie, which has to do with that particular thing that we're looking at from a, from a psychological point of view. Now, when this burning searing pain takes place in the physical body, we have then tremendous eye color change and we also have morphogenetic resonance so everyone that we're tied into on a DNA level will experience a healing right along with ourselves and uh, the people are the same as they were before but the the old problems that they had are conspicuous for their absence uh, they don't feel different because they're still themselves but they are f free from some of the traumas that have been experienced by the one individual in the family that has gone through that particular healing. Now, years ago, uh, say back in the 70s, it would take us uh, maybe a year or two before somebody would re-experience the uh, fire of the Kundalini. Uh, today, oftentimes on a first point holding, we have the fire of the Kundalini and with nearly all people within a week or two or a month or two, uh, they're experiencing this burning searing pain in their body and are going through tremendous uh, changes from a psychological or, shall I use the word, emotional point of view. Now, when they go through the pain, the pain is the capstone to memory. And as that pain is the capstone to memory, then the person begins to remember the event with all of the sensory experiences, all of the word patterns associated with that, all of the emotions which were suppressed below the level of consciousness at the time the trauma occurred. Many things we could tell you about here, but they'd be unbelievable to you until you see them and can re-experience them. The body regenerates in the areas, not just balancing, regenerates in areas where there has been trauma, even operations applied to the body. And this is something that we really need to take a look at. I was invited to the 
Benares Hindu University in Varanasi, India, where I spoke to the medical school there, uh, to the surgeons on how to remove scar tissue from surgery where in people who have pigmented skin, they have problems with keloid tissue. And that's a large uh, growth of skin on a scar. Now, in our work, when we take a person back through the trauma of the operation, they will actually feel the scar tissue, they will feel the knife cutting the skin, they will re-experience the anesthetic which will be removed from the body, and people in the room will smell it as it's escaping the human body. They'll go back through the trauma of the operation, and when they're done, oftentimes there's not so much as a line where the, the scar tissue was. And the scar has completely disappeared, all the internal abdominal in adhesions have gone away, and the body has come back to a normal function. Now, uh, this we demonstrated at t two medical schools there in, uh, in India, and uh, we had a great time to uh, answer their questions, and they're totally receptive to what we were saying. And because they, just because they haven't seen it before, because of their attitude toward yoga and meditation and alternative medicine, the medical doctors are very, very open toward this type of uh, therapy. And so we're in the process of getting body electronics established in, in India at this time. Now, after we get through the emotional body and we re-experience the burning, searing pain, uh, or what we call the kundalini fire, we have to let you understand that this is the beginning of law. It's not the end, even though many people through their yogic meditations look for this uh, burning, searing pain as an end-all. But it's not an end-all, it's the beginning because this then gives us access to the mental body where we're able to take a look at the thought patterns that we have created that are then created out into the universe, causing the universe to change and mold around the thought patterns that we have created. And when we see what thought patterns we have created, we then have the techniques available to remember the thought pattern, remember the duality of that thought pattern. We're able to encompass those dualities and go through what we call the vibration of regeneration, where the body goes through tremendous transformation to the releasing of all the emotionality and the uh, the unbelief that we've had, the false belief systems that we've had, and so on. And this then gives us access to the mental body where we can then start changing the thought patterns which have created conditions in our body which have been undesirable. Not only our body, but our environment. And when those thought patterns change, the entire universe goes through a spontaneous change with it. And therefore, we find through what we observe is that the the thought patterns that we have literally have an influence upon all life and matter around us in our particular universe. Mm -hmm.